Welcome back to Animal Crossing New Horizons. I'm Dear Darling, and shall we see what's going on on our lovely island of Horn Hollow today in a much more normal timing for today's episode rather than being like, you know, past midnight or, or well, 11 or whatever I did yesterday. Anyway, so we are, uh, I suppose, if anything, this is a, a mini arc. Of a, oh, sorry. <laughs> Let's move my phone about. A uh, story arc where we're in, we're talking about, you know, current events. And of course, uh, the biggest thing that happened is I went to visit some friends um, to watch a League of Legends World Finals. Um, uh, over the weekend and it was great fun so you know I'll, I'll talk about some of the things we did you know we spread out over the week as per usual you you know the drill you know what you're here for but anyway good evening everyone we're now in four and hello 7 32 p.m on tuesday november 8th 2022 um i also do want to quickly apologize if you're um someone who comments a lot or um the people well, generally people who leave in comments because i've noticed there's actually quite a lot of comments and i'm really behind in replying to them um i've just been a bit busy recently so it's a bit difficult to exactly find the time but you know um, and you might be like, you know, too, if, if you're busy, even shouldn't you like not be making videos? It's like, you know, you, you, you put your priorities into things and it, it turns out that making videos is a higher priority. And this, I, I didn't mean that to sound sarcastic, but it's just more just like a legitimate answer. It's just that making videos is a bit of a higher priority than responding to the comments immediately. Um, but yes, yeah, so I, I will get around to it. I don't know. Maybe this weekend. We'll see. Um, or maybe when I'm just like, oh, I've got a spare moment. It's just, <laughs> I also need to record more videos because I also have literally no backlog of videos anymore. Um, I, I have no videos ready to go. Which is a bit of a scary thought, but, you know, should be fine in the end. Uh, hopefully I can, I, I should have enough time throughout this week to probably record a few, maybe? I'm not really sure, to be perfectly honest, but we're going to have to see. Um, actually, how is this going to work? Let me think. I, I, got some, I need to record Cuphead for tomorrow, but I need to record... Wait, and, and tomorrow tomorrow is Wednesday, hold on. I, I need to look at a calendar. Cuphead for tomorrow, and then I need to record Amari for the day after, and then I need to record Cuphead for the day after, and also record a pre-recorded episode. Hmm. Not Cuphead, sorry, um, Little Nightmares. But uh, Little Nightmares is likely a 20 minute episode, so that shouldn't be too bad. But yeah, um, the thing that I'm going to talk about today, if you couldn't tell from today's title, is... Well, I haven't chosen my mind yet, but you already know. Uh, let's talk about board game cafes, I suppose. Because that's uh, another big thing we did. You know, there's a group of us. I think it was nine of us this time. Um, not normally, there can be anywhere from a range of, like... Well, I mean, we haven't done this particular meetup all, all too many times. But um, anyway, I don't know. I'm getting distracted. But there, there's quite a lot of us, basically. And we went to a board game, board game cafe. And I had never been to a board game cafe before. Um... You might be like, why haven't you been to a board game cafe before? Do you love board games? Do you not like board games? Well, I, I would say in general, I mean, it's a, a sort of similar thing. If you've seen any of my videos talking about like um, social, uh, dis not social deception games, social, um, <laughs> what are they called? Uh, maybe I'll call social deception games, I'm not really sure. Well, I'm just like, board games in general, I'm fine with them. It, it kind of depends on the board game, of course. Uh, I, I as I say, I, I do tend to fa favor cooperative things rather than um, competitive things. Um, but, you know, as I found out a lot of times through um, out playing these sort of games, is I tend to favor, and I, I don't know a better way to put it except for put it in D&D &D terms, I tend to favor being the DM rather than the players, or like that, that sort of role, I suppose. So, you know, when a board game is, you know, when we used to play one night, well, way, way, way back in the day, I, I used to like being an announcer before the app replaced, <laughs> not replaced me, but before uh, you could use their mobile app and then I started playing and I'm like, oh, I kind of like being the announcer more, I don't know. <laughs> Um, but so in general, I, I do kind of like battle board games. I'm not like crazy about them. I'm like, you know, some, some people in our friend group really love them, which is fair enough. You know, everyone's got their different loves and interests. Um, and the, you know, maybe to you, I suppose, of being friends is that you're, even if you're, you you do not love it, you're still willing to participate because you like hang out with your friends and that sort of thing. That's just kind of how it goes. So, um, we went to a board game kit board game cafe and I honestly don't know what I was uh, imagining to me to me I've I think I had a very idealistic view of what a board game cafe was like I imagined basically like a library it, it basically was a library but instead of books there were board games and it was just like so cozy so quaint it was like you know it re really like atmospheric aesthetic vibe you know Instagram worthy and that sort of thing and then you know obviously that's not very really, like practical in reality because you know it's a cafe as well you kind of got to serve food I and mean, then if you had like an entire library there's a reason you're not allowed food really in a library is because that'd be messy and you know you, you got to take your like, do you want food or do you want you know it to be easy to clean and you know it's not you're not like you can expect for librarians to clean the library every single day or something like that or even hire people it's just like it's, it's not where the funding should go probably um but yeah um but it was it was just basically like a normal sort of cafe i suppose like, like a small cafe and there was like a little uh, not a little it was quite a few like ball games like in a corner and a bookshelf um 
and, and I believe there was two rooms. I didn't really look at the other room. I'm going to be honest with you. Know, there was like a nine of us or something on just like this long table, uh, playing a, a few board games here and there. You know, board games take a really long time, which is I think is one of the reasons why I'm like a little bit dissuaded from some certain board games. I, I don't particularly like playing board games like sitting down for like whole forty minutes. Um, well, it's more, I don't mind a long one, but I don't want to play a long one, which is also competitive because as I say before, I'm not that infused by the idea of, comp not not infused by the idea of competition. I'm I'm infused by the idea of self-competition. Like I'm, you know, bettering myself and that sort of stuff. I'm just getting really weirdly metaphorical, not metaphorical, philosophical. Um, um, I, li I like to be in competition with myself to like, you know, improve myself, but being in competition against others, I'm just like, uh, I, I don't seem to have that like sort of thriller competition where other people have where they're just like, I want to win, you know, I'm, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, I'm not trying to dissuade it, if anything, I think it's a good thing to have to have like some sort of desire to win, but for me, I'm sort of just like very sort of like laissez-faire about the whole thing, like, I don't particularly know why, but you know, it's been dis dissected many times by myself before. Um, but in general, it's sort of like, um, I, I don't like if it's a combination of a really long game to play plus it's competitive plus it's like social deception and you know I said my things about social deception TLDR is basically I it's not fun to lie to my friends even if it's recreationally as a game and actually and I had a conversation with one of my friends about it because she really loves social deception games and she likes it and she was like she sort of like likens it to acting and that sort of thing like performing and like tricking in that sense and, and I'm like I, I get that which is weird because I, I do like the concept of act acting you know like playing a part and that sort of thing and role playing but I don't like it under the, the guise of doing that like under a competition I suppose which is why it's not actually a competition like don't get me wrong and, and I don't mean to like frame it as an oh playing games it must be com like competitive everyone must be at each other's everyone must hate each other no of course not it's, it's not it's, it's a game you know people all these people are very reasonable. They understand now that how <laughs> a competitive games, I, I suppose, works. Or a game against each other. It's just for some reason in my brain, it just doesn't appeal to me as much. And I, I don't really um, know that intrinsically why, but I have my guesses, as I say. So it's sort of like, <laughs> I don't know. It, it's not the social detection. It's not the social part or I particularly like dislike it's not really the deception part it's more like the, the underlying the fact that it's rather than for it being for recreational like telling a story it's more for like a game I suppose which is why I'm just like I tend to like D&D &D and, and role playing in that aspect but I don't care so much for you know social deception in that game when you play a part but I, I still had a fun time because obviously you know it's quite easy to have a fun time when you're with friends like I'd, I'd have to be doing something I really hate to dislike it so we, we played uh, a few games here and there um <laughs> by a few games i really do mean only a few games because uh, as i say playing board games take a long time like if you play one game like one game can sometimes take like up to like half an hour or something like it depends on the game you know anywhere from like let's say 15 minutes to about 40 minutes or something but then if you want to play it multiple times and that's already like quite a few hours and we're only there for like four hours so really it, it's not unexpected that we basically played kind of three well kind of two games kind of a third so the first one we, uh, we played was a game called secret hitler which you might know because it's a very popular like social deception game i wasn't all about it i'm gonna i'm not gonna lie i'm like i didn't like it as much as i liked um, other social deception games like one night and ultimate werewolf i thought it was fine um <laughs> in usual fashion i did not no, it's not i didn't play seriously because I, I don't mean to be like i'm absolutely trolling my friends games which it, it may look like it to some of our perspectives like and to a certain degree i, I suppose it is but <laughs> there is a surprising method to my madness um so you know the first game was sort of just like warming up it was a very anticlimactic game i, I turned out to be uh, the secret hitler and um we just like immediately lost because <laughs> it, it's just incredibly unlucky uh, as the case may be it was there was basically no agency like the only time i think anyone on the fascist side got like any like sway over um what happened was um was me literally on the first round where <laughs> i i had uh what was that let me think because the, the way it works is like you get policies and you get you draw three policies and you and they can either be like um rebel or fascist and then you give you if you if you're one of the roles you, you discard one and then give it to the person who then enacts one of the policies and the, i think the only, only time anyone on the fascist team had any say was, was that first round where i i could only give one fascist one um, ally policy to the person and they obviously chose not like because they were not <laughs> um um on my team i suppose so yeah um it, it's a bit anticlimactic but I, I don't judge a game based, based off that because you know the game you know the law of large numbers i suppose you you should base a game off multiple sort of iterations of it and that was just an unlucky role second time was a lot more intense um i was on the ally team this time uh, this is where i started to you know <laughs> i mean you know me when i play these games I, as soon as i like understand the rules i, I very very quickly go into i'm going to 
try the most absolute insane strategies possible because I don't know I, I guess that's what keeps it interesting for me so you know I, I basically was just like <laughs> I mean, a lot of people said I was kind of trolling, and I kind of was, where I basically just, like, voted for, like, very, very strangely in the first, like, three rounds or something, just didn't, not arouse, no, it wasn't necessarily to arouse suspicion, but it was just, you know, so some sort of, like, seeds of discontent, because I think it's just, you know, keep it, keep things a bit interesting rather than just playing exactly the same every single time. Um, and then, yeah, I, I think the fascist win, like, just it, won just it, it's quite, like, interesting with deception, but the third game is where it's at. And that's, that's a game I, I think me and my friends might remember, just due to one, you know, if you're on the friend group, you, you, you know <laughs> what happened. I make other plans, I don't even know what, what happened. I don't even know what I said, Amelia, but um, I make other plans is probably not exactly what happened, maybe, I, I don't even know what you asked about, I assume it was about cancelled plans. Um, well, I was a fascist. Um, so basically, the aim of Secret Hill is if you're on the ally team, you want to enact five allied policies. If you're on the fascist team, you want to enact six fascist policies or three fascist policies and then elect Hitler. <laughs> it's, it's weird to say, I suppose. This is like... <laughs> um, and then, like, and when when you're when when you're the president, you elect someone, or you, you cho choose to try and vote someone in, and then everyone goes yay or nay, and then they either passes on uh, to the next person or doesn't. And then um, the person you elected will draw three of the policies, and then discard one and give you two, and then you have to choose from the two whether you enact which one you enact. Sometimes you get two allied, sometimes you get one allied, one fascist, one. Sometimes you get two fascist policies. That's just kind of the, the way the world works, to be honest. Um, but this one, again, I try. I, I started out with my sort of madness, um, playing really weirdly, like arousing suspicion in my direction, that sort of thing. And then it was just a sort of thing where, um, you know, out of one of the turns, I was just like, um, another one of my teammates, a fresh teammates, um, elected me and then like it passed or something. And I was like, all right, you know, I might as well just like fully lean into this, you know, sort of like jump on the bullet, uh, jump on the bullet, J jump on the grenade, so to say, to, you know, let our team win. So then that, that just sort of happened and somehow I, I somehow I was able to be president one time and I, I don't remember how that happened and then basically the entire thing was just that I was playing like the most obvious fascist in the world or whatever and then luckily the person who was actually a secret Hitler very smartly voted to not to say no to, to me getting elected and thus built up uh, a plausible like trust with someone else who then uh, she then elected secret Hitler, but it was hard to say, after we had three fascist policies and we just won. It was, it was just a very funny game. It kind of had to be that sort of sense, but, you know, I don't even know why I bothered trying to explain to you. Basically, it was very amusing, and <laughs> um, it was something much talked about, I suppose, afterwards. Um, the second game we played was a, a sort of called, like, party game or something. It was basically, um, but it, it's kind of like Cards Against the Humanities, not, not really, not, not in the slightest, actually. It's kind of more like open-ended prompts. It, it was bit, very much a drinking game. Sort of thing where it's basically like who in who in the group is most likely to xyz and each of the cards has something different like one of them was like fall off a roof one of them was like um need advice on having need advice on their social media posts and the other one was like i'm i don't know <laughs> i'm trying to think but there were some very obviously not safe for work ones i will say um because you know it's kind of a drinking game you're gonna do that but that is very much my sort of game you know and, and, and I, I just did it as a spur of a moment in, in between like switching from that game to a different game i just basically went around the group asking like oh who do you think is this who do you think is this who do you think is this and i thought it was kind of fun i don't know if my friend group did but you know i had a lot of fun doing that um why can't why can't i go have a bit of fun anyway the, the third game i played which I, I didn't play for this one because I, I wanted to sit out from that sort of thing because i thought it was another social deception game although in retrospect looking back at it i very much would have enjoyed those one of the roles because one of the roles is basically like a host role and they sort of just like see they're, they're sort of like the overseer of a game and then the other people sort of like play the sort of social deception part and i probably would have loved being that overseer role i'm not gonna lie but you know it doesn't really matter i'm not i'm not like sad about it or anything it, it's still heavy you know I, I chose to set up that game because you know I, I didn't think i'd be interested in it and sometimes you're wrong sometimes you're right that's just how life goes um but it was called it was like deception in hong kong or something something like, <laughs> i can't I can't remember the exact name well basically it's the way i think of it is it's a combination of mysterium um oh, it's a common mysterium code names and pff, it's another game M mysterium code names and some sort of like werewolf mafia game oh no no sorry spyfall that, that was the other one but basically <laughs> everyone gets given as i understand it like a piece of evidence and like a murder weapon one person's a murder one person's the accomplice one person's a witness the murder murderer gets to choose one weapon and one like piece of evidence from their cards like everyone's got four evidence or maybe five evidence and five, four weapons and then um the accomplice can see what they chose 
the witness and then can know who the murder accomplice is, but we don't know which way around we are. We don't know who's the murderer and who's the accomplice. And basically the aim of the game is uh, for the host to try and convey um, what the, the murderer chose as a weapon and um, evidence to the other members of a group and for the other members of a group to accuse uh, the murderer of their evidence and their weapon. And I thought it was kind of cool. But of course, you know, the, the host or well, forensic scientists, that's their name, uh, can't give very direct clues. They have like these preset boards where there's like six, it's like six different words under a category and they can only choose one of the words. So it's kind of like um, blab around if you played that Jackbox game. Uh, so like one of them is like the location you'd find the evidence in would be the bedroom, the bathroom, the kitchen, etc. I mean, you can only choose one of those. So sometimes it's very obvious. It's like the pillow. That would probably be in the bedroom. And sometimes it's a bit like a hmm and hiring, like a dumbbell. It's like, uh, I don't know, a dumbbell doesn't really fit any of these rooms. I guess kind of a bedroom. But, you know, also like, I guess, I don't know if it was a living room. I didn't really look at the options. But you can understand where it's coming from. And then there are like a load of other cards which are like perfectly randomised. It was sort of like the manner of a death was like brutally, like brutal, you know, violent, brutally violent. Island, and then the other one was like you know quick and painless etc etc and it's basically like you have to do your best to answer these questions and be sort of vague about them and you know everyone gets like ch chances to guess etc 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 and i thought it was a very cool concept of a game um I actually had a discussion with one of my friends, you know, she's the one who really likes board games and we, well, we often have discussions, yeah, analytical discussions about these sort of things because that's what we do. And we were just basically like, yeah, but this game seems kind of cool and it's entirely, but the mechanics, but the base mechanics are kind of cool. The entire game lives and dies by how good the cards are and how many, like, relationships they can have uh, between each other. Which is, um, you know, what we talked about and, you know, that's what we agreed on um so yeah that was a, that was a pretty cool thing um uh, board games you know of course kind of cool you get to you know you get to eat some food and drink at the same time i don't kind of like eating food and drink and uh, eating food and playing card games at the same time that sort of thing because i don't like getting greasy fingers and then like you know holding getting my greasy fingers everywhere but you know that, that's just kind of like um what you pay for and that's sort of just like my own um uh what's the word <laughs> I was gonna say compulsions, but compulsions isn't really right a word I wanted to use. My own sort of like um, neur neuroticism, I suppose, in a sense, <laughs> um, at play there rather than um, rationality, where it's like, who cares if it gets a little bit, you know, greasy, or you, you know, you can wipe your fingers with a napkin and that's perfectly fine as well. Um, yeah, so board game cafe is genuinely pretty cool, I'd say. Um, but there's a lot of games there which I thought were pretty cool. Like I, I saw a game there called Root, which is a game. What was that? Did you see that? There's something just in the right of the screen, which just like flashed by. I don't know if I lost my mind or something. But um, yeah, but there was a lot of games there which I don't be like. I don't know. And I'm not gonna say I, I wanted to play them necessarily because I, I don't know if I particularly did. But I was curious about them. Um, but you know, being in such a large group means you have limited all times games that you can kind of play but you, you of course you can split up into groups but that's always difficult to organize because then you have to find two groups both you want to play the games are assigned to um i saw the game just one which i uh is like a sort of like cooperative it's kind of like that, that part of deception in hong kong where it's basically like uh, a person has to guess a keyword and then everyone else has to write down one word to clue them into that word but if anyone else writes down the same word if any two people write down the same word, they can no longer use that as a hint, uh, basically. Which, you know, I think I think that's pretty cool. There's a game called Root, which I, I'm very interested in. Not really to play, but I'm just kind of like interested in the game design of it. Because it's like asymmetric competitive sort of game. Where you play as a different clan and each clan plays incredibly differently. And you all have different like sort of ways to win and like methods to win. and then, But it all takes place on like the same board and things. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's pretty interesting. I'm not going to lie. Um, what other games are kind of cool to see? I can think of off the top of my head. I don't know, there's a lot of other games that I recognise, like, like Love Letter was one. There's this Japanese game, I can't remember, where it was, which I was like, oh, it kind of looks like, the, kind of looks like, you know, those cards where you're meant to test if someone's psychic or not, you know, like with wavy lines, with X squares or circles. But it was about, like, electricity and, like, utilities, and I was like, okay, strange, but that works. This is a really cute game with, like, a load of foxes, I can't remember what it was called, but I was just like, look at my pretty art, that's amazing. Um, I don't remember, but there was a lot of cool games. And certainly if you're a board game aficionado or you're a board game geek, as uh, the website name would have you entail, you should probably check it out. A, 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 board, a local board game to you. You probably love it, uh, I would say. Um, what do I think of it? I think it's, you know, it's something I would definitely go to again, especially with friends. Uh, I don't think it would be something I'd go to myself. Um, 
and, and, and unless they had like you know maybe like dnd nights about something maybe i would run maybe but <laughs> and i don't know I'm, I'm much more you know unsurprisingly i'm much more biased towards playing games with my friends and rather than playing games with strangers but you know with strangers you can make friends so that's just kind of you know life i suppose but anyway i'm gonna round off this episode here so if you have been watching thank you very much it's been animal crossing new horizons i've been dear darling any likes comments subscriptions shares are greatly appreciated join me dear darling discord follow me on twitter down below hope to see each other again but for now it's our farewell so until next time bye bye for now